welcome to this week's Wednesdays in Prayer. Once more, brothers and sisters, we are thanking God for this privilege for us to meet and fellowship together. Our lesson today comes from St. John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. The word of the Lord. Over the last two weeks, we looked at these verses from St. John 13 as we were reminded that as Christians, we are known by our love. In the first week, we were reminded that our love for one another is to be an unconditional love, love without limits. Last week, we looked at an uncompromising love, a love that does not make concession in loving others. This week, we turn our attention to a universal love. We are familiar with John 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It's probably one of the first verses we learned as children. God's love for the world speaks specifically here to the peoples of the earth. Within this world are people of varying creeds, cultures, races, language, etc., in this world, we have some people who can be described as good, honest, law-abiding citizens, while on the other hand, there are those who are dishonest and seek to hurt others with their activities. There may be some persons who we wish were not part of this world based on the lifestyle they have chosen, yet God loves them just the same. When the word says, for God so loved the world, it includes every unscrupulous person you can think of. His love is inclusive. This is exactly what we are being asked of by Jesus, to have an inclusive love where we are not selective in who we love. It is one of the hardest things to love one's enemy. But Jesus commands it so many times in scripture. It is not easy to love people who seek to cause destruction and mayhem in our societies. But when Jesus say we are to love as he loves, this is exactly what he's telling us to do. He's calling us to a new way of thinking about love, how we relate to others to do this differently from how we normally would as human beings. Normally, we decide who we would love based on how we feel about them. And as such, we would have a category of persons we love and another set who just would not fit in. This may be a group we avoid and try not to associate with. We may choose not to relate to them not necessarily because they are misfits in society, but because they don't fall in our category for friendship. This is not a call about who should be your friends. It's a call about loving people, regardless of who they may be or where they are from. It's a call about inclusive love. It's a call not to segregate but love people in spite of their beliefs, nationality, economic, and social standing. Jesus said, When we can love like he loves, then people will know we are his disciples. Therefore, to be known as a child of God has nothing to do with regular church attendance, or your attire for worship, or your place of worship. People may know you as a faithful, committed member of a church. But the question is, are you known by your love? 
It goes without saying then, my friend, if we want to love the people of the world as God does, we have to make this a matter for prayer. We have to seek his help and guidance in this venture. Let this be the first step you take today and allow him to lead you in loving the next person you interact with. Amen. Today, our prayer focus will be on theological institutions that are involved in the training and formation of men and women for ministry. Let us pray. Loving, kind, and gracious God, we know that in your wisdom you have created and called many to be co-workers with you in the ministries and service to others. We have seen in the scriptures those who were called and set apart to be a mouthpiece as prophets, apostles, and missionaries. We thank you for their faithfulness and commitment to those offices and for the lives that have been impacted over the years. We are indeed thankful that you continue to call down through the ages and even today. We are thankful for those who have been responding to the call on their lives. We are indeed happy, Lord, that they have chosen to be obedient to such call in a time and age when many are reluctant to make such sacrifice of personal ambition and are willing to forego material and financial gain for full-time service in your service. We continue to ask that you will provide for them spiritually, emotionally, and financially. We pray for their families, that they too will be cared for as they offer the support that is needed for faithful service for a spouse or parent. Our loving and gracious God, we pray for those who have dedicated their lives to the training and formation of those who have responded to your call upon their lives. We are mindful of the challenges that are faced by these institutions especially where there are dependencies on the goodwill of others for support. We pray for the financial challenges many of these colleges and seminaries face on an annual or monthly basis as they seek to carry out the task of ministerial formation. In recognition of the need for quality education and training in the preparation for your servants, we ask, dear Lord, that adequate resources will be found to keep the doors of these institutions open. We thank you for member churches and bodies that are doing their best with the donations and other contributions they offer, and ask that you will continue to bless them in this partnership. We pray for the members of staff of these institutions that they will continue to open themselves to hear from you and to remain relevant to the times, and not to take for granted the awesome responsibility they have in shaping minds and characters of those under their tutelage. We pray that the guidance they offer will not be self-centered, but God-inspired. Bless them as a team of workers to do their master's will, and never to lose heart in what they are called to do. As we share these concerns with you, Lord, we ask that your will be done in the lives of all those who are called by your name. Bless us as your people wherever we may be today. In your name we pray. Amen.